We're now going to look more into the linear variational method and the secular determinant for a more specific case. So to remind ourselves about the linear variational method, we've got some trial wave function, which is a linear combination of these basis functions 5n times a linear coefficient cn, and the sum of all these is our total trial wave function. The Base, the functions in here, the basis functions, form a basis set in which the problem is expanded. And these cn, these linear coefficients, are our variational parameters. Whenever we have a variational parameter, that means that we are going to vary that parameter until the expectation value of the energy does not change with respect to the value of that parameter. So we are at a minimum with respect minimum in energy with respect to the value of that parameter and this is what has to be true for every single parameter to get the minimum energy wave function within this type of functional form and we know from the variational principle that the minimum energy wave function is the best possible wave function within a functional form like this and the better the lower the energy the better the wave function and the closer you are to the true ground state wave function so uh, Trying to enforce this condition with this expectation value of energy for a trial function which looks like this, we saw led to a, a set of equations which is HC equals ESC where our uh, Hamiltonian matrix here is composed of matrix elements which are the individual uh, phi star I H acting on phi J integrated over the entire range of the wave function. We have, that's our Hamiltonian matrix H. We have our overlap matrix S, which is just the integral of I star J over all of the wave functions. So that kind of tells, that enforces normalization by having this matrix there. E is the energy of the whatever system we're talking about. And C is just a vector with all of these variational coefficients in there. And that vector should, in the end, be uh, normalized to one because of this S matrix. And in order for this to have a non-trivial solution, we have to have this secular determinant, this H minus ES has to be equal to zero. So this is the determinant of the matrix H minus the energy times the matrix S. Okay, so we're gonna look at what equations we can derive for the energy based off of having a trial function which is a linear combination of only two basis functions and we're also going to assume that we have an orthonormal basis set that is any uh, i any i star i integral is going to be one any i star j integral is going to be zero if i and j are not the same so our s matrix is just an identity matrix giving us hc equals ec which is the uh, matrix form of the schrodinger equation Okay, so uh, what we're going to have is H11 minus E times S11, the first element of this determinant here. Then for the next element, we have H12 minus E S12. We have H21 minus E S21. And finally, H22 minus E S22 and this whole determinant is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so what are some obvious simplifications we can make? Um, we know our basis set is orthonormal, so we know this S12 is zero. We know S21 is zero. We know S11 is one, because that's, that's normalization, that I star I is one. So that S goes away, we just have E left there. Similarly, S22 is 1. So the thing we're left with is we just have H11 minus E, H12. And because this matrix is Hermitian, we know that H12 has to be equal to H21. So this is also H12. That's a requirement of Hermitian operators. And then we have H22 minus E. Okay, so this determinant is going to equal zero. So what does it look like when we expand out this determinant? Well, that's just going to be uh, this diagonal, so this times this, minus this times this. That's, the, that's 
an expansion of a 2 by 2 determinant. That's what it'll give. So we're going to have h11 minus e times h22 minus e, then minus, and we have h12 times h12, and all of this is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so we can expand out those two polynomials there. And when we do that, you'll see that the final result we get from that is that e squared plus minus h11 minus h22 times e plus h11 h22 minus h12 squared equals 0. So now we have a quadratic equation for e. We have something in the formula ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So now we can use the quadratic formula to try to get the two values of what e is going to be in this basis set. This basis set has two uh, basis functions, so it's going to give us two energy eigenvalues, and the lowest one will be the ground state eigenvalue, the ground state energy. Okay, so in terms of our quadratic formula, we have that A equals 1, we have that B equals minus quantity H11 plus H22, we have that C equals H11 H22 minus H12 squared. So this energy is going to give us minus B for the first part of the quadratic equation, plus or minus then you have b squared minus 4ac, so that gives us h11 plus h22. Uh, b squared and minus b squared are the same, so I'm just putting in minus b here and squaring it. Easier to work with. Minus 4, a is 1, so we don't have to worry about it. Then c is this, h11, h22, minus h12 squared. All of this divided by 2a, a is 1, so it's just divided by 2. Okay, so what we want to get is this radicand here, which I'm just going to call rad. This is going to be equal to, we expand out this polynomial, h12 squared plus 2h11 h22 plus h22 squared minus 4 h11 h22 and then minus h12 squared times minus 4 gives us plus 4 h12 squared. Okay, so we can do some factoring here. This 2 and this minus 4 have the same term, so this cancels. We end up getting a minus 2 canceling out that. And then you'll notice that we went from having h, we went from having something like x squared plus 2xy plus y squared to x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So we went from h11 plus h22 squared to we can now refactor that into h11 minus h22 squared plus 4h12 squared. So that's what's inside the radicand there. So if I rewrite this now, I can rewrite this in a different way. I'll have h11 plus h22 over 2. If I pull out the factor of 2 to this term here. Now I'm going to write this term in here in a slightly different way once we put that in there. We have <coughs> The h11 and the h22 here, and that's h11 minus h1 minus h22 squared, plus 4 times the h12 squared. But I can write that also in another way. I can write that this equals 4 times h11 minus h22 over 2 squared plus h12 squared. I can factor it in that way as well, and then I can bring a factor of 2 out into the front, 
and that factor of 2 is going to cancel with this denominator here. So what I can what I can be left with is just the following radical the following radical which is h11 minus h22 over 2 squared plus h12 squared make that h more clear there okay so this is our expression for our energy this value in the radicand here is always going to be real. It's the sum of two things which are both uh, real numbers squared, so that's always going to be positive, so this is always going to be real. So the minus term is going to give us the ground state energy uh, E0, and the plus term is going to give us an excited state. In this case, we just have two basis functions, so we're just going to get uh, two eigenvectors here and two eigenvalues, two energy eigenvalues and they're determined by these two here. So these Hamiltonian matrix elements really determine what are going to be the two energies here. And if we analyze these two terms, what we'll see is that H11 plus H22 over 2 is the average of the energy of the two states. So if we have something like H11 is down here, and H22 is up here. This term that I have in cyan here is going to be the average in between those two. Then uh, this term in the radicand here, what we'll see is if we have if we have uh, H11 and if we have zero coupling here, if this H12 is zero, so then we're just going to get H11 for the energy. So this term here would be the coupling of the states or the mixing of the states or whatever you want to call it. So if we turn off the if we turn off this coupling matrix element, if there's no interaction between state 1 and state 2 in this Hamiltonian matrix, then the value we're going to get is just the ground state and that's with no coupling. If, the, if this value is turned on, then this, this element becomes larger, and then what you'll get are two states where you'll end up with a state which is lower in energy than the original state there, and one that is higher in energy than the higher energy state. So the effect of coupling is going to be to give us a state which is lower in energy than either of the individual basis functions that we started with. And this is a good thing because going lower in energy means that we're approaching the true ground state wave function better and better according to the variational principle. So this has all been uh, pretty abstract thus far, even deriving the specific case for a two by two orthonormal system. But uh, in the next video, we'll look at a specific example of this and see what this means in practice for the energy of a quantum mechanical system.